and today we're going to talk about data platforms. We're going to talk about that platform that has more business value than greater practices and its base features are Python, Apache Airflow, S3 and Snowflake. And let's go, we're going to implement this at Data Engineering Explorers. Okay, these are the steps we're going to follow. Create a bucket, set up uh, Airflow, and install it and deploy the application locally. And then we're going to create the code in Jupyter ID, create the DAG using tasks. We're going to change the Docker file to encompass the dependencies. Then we're going to test the DAG and connect uh, snow to no Snowflake, the S3 to Snowflake, the data stored in, s in S3. So first of all, we're going to create our bucket. Uh, we're going to use the free tier for Amazon S3 and we're going to have to create an account if you don't have already have one and you will create the S3. We're going to go with the default configuration for today because we don't have specific requirements uh, and this is just a consumption of a API, a simple API. So we're going to create that bucket and yeah, that's it, our bucket's there. So we did the first thing, create the bucket. Now we're going to create the access key uh, that we'll need in our code uh, or Python code and you can upload your data manually but the, we don't want that right uh, so we're going to go to uh, manage access to AWS resources as Amazon S3 is a AWS resources and we're going to create a user and we're going to use the user and also default configuration, just showing you guys the, the possibilities here, but uh, just next, next and create. So now we have our user and there we're going to security credentials and we're going to create uh, the access key itself. Uh, we're going to use for local code, so we should put that and it has some alternative recommended but uh, For now, we're going to use the access key and we can use tags uh, But we're not aiming to do that in this video. So now we have our access keys um, access key and the secret access key and this is quite uh, important to save and you should keep it safe because it is a sensible information so yeah uh, we just did our other step right so let's put ok here and then we're going to give access to our user because we have the access key but we don't have the access to write in the bucket so we're going to stick to the same page add permissions and we're going to attach policies directly and we're going to search for S3. Here we have it. And we're going to attach this one. And remember, this gives like the whole uh, access, writing, deleting. So be careful with that. And we're done. Okay, first part, create bucket in S3 and uh, give access okay now we have to set up an environment for airflow to do that we have to have docker installed and I would recommend the desktop docker as we will need to docker compose and desktop docker has already like the docker compose in it so go ahead and install that I'm gonna assume you installed that I won't go through the next next here uh, and then we're going to deploy the application locally in containers we're going to run airflow in docker 
so we're going to follow this uh, quick start that I'm gonna list in the description and uh, we're going to need as I said docker and docker compose and the first step is fetching a docker compose yaml file and we have a curl uh, command here to download it and as you can see it downloaded uh, we're gonna open just look around uh, and it's it's the file you will need for running Airflow locally on Docker. And here there are the ex explanations and etc. And you can look through that. Um, but our goal is to make it work. So uh, we're going to do the next step. It's creating those files, those uh, folders, sorry, and the environment uh, file. And yeah, that's basically it. Those are necessary for uh, Airflow init and uh, Docker Compose to work. Then we're going to init it. And what init does is uh, it creates the the Postgres and the Redis uh, that we will need for Airflow. And if you have already another, you can uh, customize it. This information on on the Docker Compose file. But here we're going to use the ones uh, provided by Airflow. So it is over uh, Airflow in it. And then after that, and it takes a bit, we will do the, the Air Docker Compose that will actually like deploy the containers that actually are Airflow. So we'll do that. Again, it will take a bit of time, but the containers will appear here and uh, here we have the trigger the worker the scheduler and the web server the web server is the one that we're going to see the scheduler does the scheduling the trigger does the triggering and the worker uh, do the work itself like it uh, runs our code and etc so here we see uh, it getting ready it took a bit longer than that so we have to wait and after that, we're going to click on the port and the local host will appear for us. And again, this takes a bit even after it ended. So we're going to keep refreshing and waiting. And after a while, it appears for us. And we're going to use Airflow and Airflow to sign in as is the default one. And if you're doing this in production, please change that. So yeah, uh, we did the installing Docker and then we did deploy the application uh, locally. So the setup for Airflow is done. Now we're going to create the code. Here, as you can see, I have the version 3.9.5. I am creating the environment. Uh, that's good practice in Python because you won't be installing in your computer, but in that file. And then after creating it, uh, it takes a while to uh, you will have to activate it and this command works for Unix environment. Uh, then you're going to install whatever uh, library you need. I'm going to just install notebook to show here. Uh, but we are going to install many libraries that are on the requirements file uh, down below. So please do that and don't forget the dash R and I have the requirements already so that's why but it will install for you so yeah that's it for this part and we created the environment and installed the dependencies but now we have to create the code itself in Jupyter right so we're going to open Jupyter Notebook. You just have to type it on your environment. And it's going to open our Jupyter Notebook. Then you will see that in your folder, you have your folder content. And you're going to go and create a new uh, notebook for Python. And it takes a bit. You're going to rename it. And this is the most important part. Uh, not 
coding itself but thinking what you have to do in that code and that's why I, I am going to uh, list here the steps that we're going to go through we're going to extract the data right we need to call it from its source and then we're going to have a bit of transformation uh, because the data always has some something that we want to change uh, be it's type, it's uh, column names, whatever so uh, we're going to do that just making some notes here and then we're going to load our data to S3 as we have uh, set up our access key and created our bucket so we're going to load it into uh, our sync or S3 so yeah uh, I'm gonna populate the code here uh, because I think it will be quicker for our video uh, we have here JSON and requests for the extraction we're going to extract in this uh, function and it's this API weather forecast API and there are a lot of variables here that you can set but for this purpose we're going to only need whatever it's here and we're going to I'm gonna show you here what's the return on that and it's a big dictionary right so we're going to get it the text and then we're going to transform into a dictionary with json loads and return the dictionary and then we're going to receive it at uh, the dictionary into the transform function uh, we're going to use pandas to, to transform it and we're going to normalize and explode these uh, fields then we're going to load the data into S3 and we're going to use Boto and AWS Wrangler that's basically pandas in AWS uh, daytime.env date and OS for some minor things uh, such as setting up the environment variables that we'll need uh, that's basically the code we're going to load the environment variables and those environment variables are the access key ID and the secret access key that we have set up previously we're going to put it here instead of directly in our code it's not that secure but it's better and then we're going to load it uh, we're going to receive here the data frame transformed in the, the previous function and we're going to get the year month date to set the path we're going to create a session with Boto using our access key ID and secret access key to, to uh, log in into AWS to be able to use the service actually uh, and then we're going to write it using Wrangler uh, to the S3 bucket and we're going to transform it to per K we're going to use the transform data the path is that one using our year, date, uh, month and etc and we're going to pass here uh, as a parameter the Boto session for it to be able to actually do the, the writing itself and here we have the main flow and here we have our bucket with no data and if we restart and run all we will see that the data will be uploaded there Let's see. And yeah, it is there. Uh, we have the date, as I've said. And we have our PORK file. So that's done. And now we're going to create the DAG itself. And to do create the DAG, we're going to use this concept. Uh, of Airflow that it's called tasks I'm going just to give it a look on the documentation also linked below uh, and here we have some 
kind of tasks that we have and we're going to use task flow. Uh, this is an example on the Airflow site. But I'm going to show you here uh, how we're going to do it for our case. So here we have the imports and the definition of the DAG itself here. Uh, it's not scheduled, start date, uh, the tags. You can do much more than that, but uh, for this video it's just that. And we have the definition of detail and each task is one function that I have shown you and gone through. Uh, so it's basically the same thing, uh, only under task. And yeah, then we have the main flow uh, below and then we have the ETL being called. But here we have a problem because uh, Airflow doesn't encompass uh, AWS Wrangler and when we comment there that we are able to actually access it and we don't have that error anymore. But there is a problem because to make this work we will have to ne we, we need that library, right? The AWS Wrangler. So even though we commented and we don't have the error of the important, important uh, when I trigger the DAG, I'm, I I know it will not work, but I want to show you guys how you can uh, see further problems in your DAG because it's not only impo uh, importing your DAG that can have problems, but in executing it. And I also recommend you to do your code before in like an ID, ID, sorry. And yeah, you have the load and you have the problem there. It's red and you go to logs. And when you go through the log, you see uh, the error. Uh, Wrangler is not defined. It doesn't even understand it's a library. So we need that. And to be able to do that, to be able to access it, we will need to, uh, our, our creation of DAG is okay, but we will, will need to change the Docker file, the Docker image to encompass the, de the dependency to write in S3 and then redeploy the application doing the steps just as we did before. So here is our image. Uh, it's quite simple, it's just a base, uh, already used for Airflow using the user Airflow and then we have the pip install AWS Wrangler and in the terminal I am creating the I'm building the the image itself and this will take a bit of time and I tagged with latest but if you are going to use this approach please uh, tag it properly uh, and yeah that that's basically it and then we're going to check if our Docker image was built and tagged properly. And it's there. So we're going to push it to Docker Hub. You need to have a Docker Hub account, so be sure you do that and have uh, access it uh, via CLI in your computer before trying to push it. Uh, and then it's pushed and we're going to look into Docker Hub itself and it's there and it's available for everyone to see. Remember that and be careful with credentials while building images. And you're going to move as I've shown you uh, on, the, on the Docker Compose and you're going to delete all of the previous uh, parts and yeah. So as you can see, the image is changed in line 52 and you're going to do the Docker Compose Airflow in it again. The whole process uh, that we have done in the beginning of the video and it's there. So, and we're going to look at Docker again, but this time you can see that the image is the one that we've set. Yeah, and here we have uh, after Airflow Compose up and taking a bit to, to load it. And here we have our DAG at the same folder, uh, but now with AWS Wrangler working. And here we have the bucket with no data 
and again running this uh, DAG and yeah that's basically basically it you change your docker image to encompass the library you want and you redeploy using the same steps as you did first but after uh, changing the docker image on the docker compose file line 52 for me and so about that and for you probably and then you can see that that works and yeah it did work su succeeded and our data is there let us see yeah it's there so it works so yeah we did uh, redeploy and we tested and now we're going to connect s3 to s data to snowflake so we can access it so here you have snowflake and you created a, a free trial version 30 days and you have worksheets and then you create a sql worksheet and First of all, you have to create a database uh, to, to be able to create the connection between uh, S3 and an external table. That's what we're aiming to do here. Uh, store the data in S3 and connect here. So you have the compute and the read account, and then you will refresh and your database is going to appear here. And then you're going to, uh, I'm going to list this down below, this documentation, but you will create the connection to S3 first, and then you're going to access that data as it would be stored in Snowflake. So first you have to create this stage that is the connection in uh, with S3. So you have the, your bucket and you have your data there and you need AWS key and secret key so you will be able to connect and then you put your URL you don't need endpoint because you will be using S3 that you can also use as a free trial and then you're going to put your AWS key ID and secret I'm gonna put it here and you're gonna uh, run I ran it and I created the stage area as you can see and then you have to connect the the table itself so to do that you need uh, to create an external table that will uh, access the data inside s3 and that's interesting because s3 is cheaper for storing data than uh, snowflake so here you have to create your table and you have to put the location that's the path that your data is going to be in and all the refresh and refresh on create is about the refreshing of the data how many times it will be uh, refreshed and you have to remember that's cost so you have your data here in this path and you have file format per k too you have a lot of other file formats too so you don't have to use only parquet then you have the parquet files here so if you run it you're going to create it and your data will be accessible there uh, you will notice that my data is not pretty but you can do transformation to access it uh, in different fields and etc but yeah, that's basically it. So here is our repository with all of the components and everything that I've did in this video. I did very quickly, so you didn't need a long video to create your first uh, data platform. Not even first necessarily, but yeah, uh, our first one in this series. And you can go through that and uh, keep pausing the video to go along and if you have doubts please uh, tell me in the comments and here's our idea high value da data platform and we're going to do this to deliver more value 
and the next steps are uh, Spark and Lake House format. Format. So if you're interested, please keep up with us, and we're going to keep posting on YouTube and Twitter. So uh, if you want to, please follow us, and if this was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. Thank you very much.